Members, the sitting is resumed, and it's time now for questions to the Minister of Regional Development. And I call Mr. David McNary. Uh, question one. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Northern Ireland Investment Fund is targeted at areas where significant infrastructure investment <coughs> is usually taken forward by the private sector, but where government has a particular interest since the investment helps to deliver on specific executive uh, objectives. Uh, these areas include social and affordable housing, uh, energy production, energy and renewable energy, telecommunications and urban regeneration. As such, my department's functions and related projects would not fall within the scope of the fund. With regard to the specific use of the European Investment uh, Bank funds, Her Majesty's Treasury's uh, public expenditure guidelines restrict the ability of Northern Ireland's departments and their non-departmental public bodies to borrow from external sources. In this respect, even government loans to public corporations will score against departmental capital budgets. Therefore, the scope to directly involve the European Investment Bank in funding projects across my department is more limited. I met with representatives from the European Investment Bank earlier this year to discuss their potential involvement in a number of projects, in particular the funding of the AS6. Um, with uh, European Investment Bank funding being provided through councils uh, was considered. We met uh, to consider this proposal with the councils. Unfortunately, it has not yet been possible to reach um, a successful outcome on the proposal. I will, however, continue to explore all feasible options for funding of capital projects by my department. Uh, can I say my department has been very successful, as he will know it to, to date, in accessing European funding for a number of roads and transport projects, and I will continue to explore opportunities for further EU funding. I call David McNary for supplementary. Thank you. I do thank the Minister for his answer. I'm sure he'll agree with me that un until UKIP liberate us all from the costs of £54 million a day just to be Europeans, we should be retrieving our own money from the EIB. I'd ask the Minister, uh, categorically, has he put forward any schemes uh, other than he's related to, uh, which would qualify. Um, I, would, I would take exception to what he says, um, you know, his department doesn't qualify. Um, I believe that there, there are areas where he should find out more about that. Can the member finish his and, question, please? Well, I was in the middle of it. Um, and just to conclude my uh, question, Deputy Speaker, um, to ask the Minister, uh, is it, what are the lending terms for EIB money? Uh, are they attractive enough to ease the savagery he says was imposed by the Finance Minister on him? I'm grateful to the, to, to the member for his, uh, for his question. Uh, I, I, and I think, um, I think there requires to be some further clarification on, on, on the understanding of, of a European Investment Bank and how it uh, operates. Uh, and I had tried to outline that in, in terms of that uh, the, the, the Her Majesty's treasure, uh, Treasury, the public expenditure guidelines restrict very much the ability of the Northern Ireland departments and their non-departmental public bodies uh, to borrow from external sources. And, and, and therefore, um, it is for, uh, for private initiatives or uh, something that we would carry forward as we attempted to do, even using councils uh, as um, uh, a potential um, avenue of funding. That hasn't been uh, possible uh, at the moment. We'll continue to do that. If I was very mischievous, uh, uh, mischievous I, I, I would uh, welcome uh, the, the, uh, the interest uh, from a member of UKIP uh, to, to access European funds. Uh, I hope you've told Nigel because Rochester is this Thursday. <laughs> I call Rosaline McCorley. I would ask him to call you August Gumbias Lechenaira as Octoragra. I thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister uh, for, his, for his answer. Um, and Diglo Mira Naira, or Kole and Urin Segi, and Rektinus O Offic OFM, O Offic and Kirara, and Las, August and Las Kirara, Muinu Orpak, Kipi, Fingiero, and Shamak. Can I ask the Minister, has this department achieved the OFMDFM requirement of achieving 20% uh, European funding? I thank the member for her, uh, for her question. Uh, and indeed, 
very happy to confirm that, that, that in terms of uh, the executive departments, DRD uh, uh, is easily the best and has the uh, uh, most success uh, in drawing down e EU money. Uh, and I have a dedicated funding team uh, established, which I established, uh, to, to ensure that we remain top of that particular league. And, and so we will continue uh, to, uh, uh, to draw down as much uh, uh, European funding as we can. I can tell you that sums to date, in the period to date, um, the budget 2011-15, uh, to 15, something like £57,174,839 uh, has been drawn down uh, as a result of our efforts. Uh, uh, through European sustainable competitive uh, 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 programmes, through Interreg 4A, Interreg 4B, and 10T. So we're very much uh, uh, on top of this game and, uh, uh, and looking at all opportunities whereby we can benefit from EU funding. I call Pat Ramsey. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, would he agree the lack of transport infrastructure across Northern Ireland? as a key element in the levels of social and economic deprivation we have, and it is imperative that we have funding from external sources to deal with this urgency. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, uh, and indeed um, I accept the point uh, that, uh, that he's making, presumably that better connectivity uh, all throughout Northern Ireland uh, is surely a, a key uh, benefit. Uh, to economic um, uh, progress, and, and that's what I've sought to do, not only around the executive table as I bid for uh, necessary funds from conventional sources, but also to utilise uh, the, um, the projects, uh, the, the, sorry, to utilise the opportunities that are before us in terms of Europe. I think we've had some success with that. Uh, under 10T, uh, he will know that we had success in the Coal Rain to London Dairy Track Relay Phase 1, the dual lane of the A at Coleman's Corner to Bally Record roundabout. Uh, uh, we have the installation of rapid charge points for electric uh, vehicles and supporting IT systems, and we have put forward other schemes such as the, ben the Belfast Intermodal Transport Hub and York Street Interchange. And at some stage, uh, I hope also. Uh, the, the new uh, waterside uh, station in Londonderry. Moving on, I call John Dallat. Mr Deputy Speaker, question number two. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, can I say at the outset that I do not accept the premise uh, uh, of the question. I, I made myself available to the Assembly on the 3rd of November when I made my statement. I went before the Regional Development Committee on the 12th of November to speak about the matter in detail. I also uh, sought to speak with the Chair and Deputy Chair of the Committee in advance of my statement. Circumstances did not uh, uh, permit me to speak to the Chair, but I did, however, speak to the Vice Chair and the Clerk. I also uh, made clear in my statement to the Assembly on the 3rd of November uh, um, that um, I can advise that the current tendering process relating to the signalling element of the upgrade of the Belfast London Derry railway line will proceed, uh, subject to the necessary approvals being attained and for an updated uh, economic appraisal, uh, appraisal. The member was in attendance uh, at the Regional Development Committee uh, last Wednesday uh, when I explained, explained the current situation uh, on the project in detail. I remain committed, fully committed to the completion of the work and to the improvement of the rail service between Northern Ireland's two great cities, or two of Northern Ireland's largest cities. Uh, Mr. The Minister knows fine well that the elected representatives for months were treated like mushrooms and kept in the dark about the postponement of this contract. Will the Minister today give us some good news? I take it he's giving us a promise that the contract will go ahead at the third attempt. Does he have any other good news about the North West that he might tell this Assembly? Well, I'm grateful to the, to, uh, to the member for his um, supplementary question. and, and uh, uh, I, I, I don't consider him to be a mushroom at all um, and, uh, or anybody else uh, in this chamber. And I have treated everyone with utmost respect, and I'm sure the member will concede that. Let me say, all of these issues have been explored in some detail, not only following the questions to my statement in the House on the 3rd of November, but also um, uh, 
at the Regional Development Committee. Um, I have again today, and I do again say that I am committed fully to the completion of this work. We are working through the various stages. Uh, we're awaiting the outcome of the economic appraisal with DFP, uh, and we, but we will continue uh, to, to, uh, to make uh, progress as quickly and as speedily as we possibly can. The member did ask, uh, had I any other good news uh, for um, the, the North West? I indicated uh, in my earlier reply to his colleague, Mr Ramsey, about the potential for uh, perhaps EU funding at the Londonderry uh, Waterside Rail Station. I'm very hopeful that we can move forward on, on that. Um, I, uh, obviously, uh, my officials have engaged extensively with uh, the SEUPB and officials in Scotland and the Republic of Ireland to explore the potential for the project to be funded through Interreg 5A. And uh, that cooperational programme um, document is currently being formalised by the Commission and the first call for suitable applications is planned to be in the spring of 2015. We will pursue that as well. I call George Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Chair. <clears throat> Could I ask the Minister what contact he has had with uh, landowners affected by the, by the delay in the Phase 2 signal programme, particularly down at Ballerina? Uh, grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and indeed uh, he keeps a continuing uh, interest on the, on the issue of the Bellarina um, uh, a part of that project. Uh, obviously, uh, he is aware of, of, of the land uh, issue involved there. Uh, we are seeking to resolve that, and of course, we will we'll be consulting. Um, I expect uh, TransLink will be, or will be consulting, continue to consult uh, with landowners and all interested parties um, in that area. I call Sean Lynch. Uh, last can call you on Gom Quaker Station area in Fraglishin. And I want to thank the Minister for his answers to date. And I understand, yes, the Minister did come to the uh, brief myself initially and, and did come to the committee last week. But can I ask the Minister what was the timeline in terms of learning of the di difficulties regarding procurement? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and uh, I think I did out, uh, outline um, the, 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 the timescale uh, as, to, as to how uh, things had evolved um, in some detail uh, last week. Basically, um, we were alerted uh, to uh, the situation at the end of June. That was confirmed to us uh, by late uh, July by the TransLink Board, uh, and uh, in, in early August I, I commissioned uh, the, the special uh, report, the, the power report, which uh, uh, was uh, undertaken with considerable speed uh, and uh, happened in September. Those recommendations were made available to me by the end of September, uh, and uh, obviously I had to uh, I'll conclude on, on those and point and chart a, a way forward with TransLink on it. Uh, that took us uh, to the end of October, and uh, we were then in a position to uh, inform uh, the House in my statement of the 3rd of November. I call Leslie Cree. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And again, I would ask the Minister um, if he's had any indications that the Department of Finance and Personnel will process the revised business case without further delay, in fact, expeditiously. Well, can I thank the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, we have not yet had final confirmation from uh, DFP, um, but I do believe uh, that uh, this is an important uh, programme for government project. Uh, and, and I have to say that with passenger journeys uh, on the London Dairy to Belfast line increasing by over one third in the last two years, and up to 1.6 million uh, following uh, phase one uh, of this project. Uh, I, I very much hope that DFP will recognise the value of the project um, uh, despite the increase in phase two costs. Um, we can, of course, relook at the business case to ensure that all relevant social and economic benefits have been set out in sufficient detail and that the um, established growth in passenger numbers uh, has been clearly taken into account. Moving on, I call Ian McRae. Question four. Three, sorry. 
<laughs> I, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I, I, I'm happy to go straight to question four, but uh, his own interests seem to be in question three. Um, as my department is facing significant uh, resource budget constraints, I've had to take a number of difficult decisions, including the suspension of works orders to external contractors who were responsible for the repair of approximately three quarters of the street lights that go out. In order to deal with the health and safety implications, I've set priorities for dealing with uh, street lighting faults. Priority uh, will be given to those faults that present an electrical hazard to members of the public, uh, and contractors will still be employed to deal with these faults. The department's uh, operations and maintenance staff, who can provide around 25 per cent of the overall resource uh, required to fix street lighting faults, will endeavour to repair as many lights as possible prioritising large groups of lights which are out and then individual lights that have failed. At this stage, uh, it is very difficult to predict how many street lights will not be repaired by the end of this financial year. As of 14 November uh, 2014, almost 15,000 of our total of 280,000 street lights were out across Northern Ireland. In the period since the 8th of August 2014, uh, when I had to suspend use of external contractors for routine street uh, lighting repairs. My operations and maintenance staff have fixed over 5,000 uh, faulty street lights across Northern Ireland. I must point out that street lighting repairs have not ceased. All fault reports are being recorded and will be dealt with as soon as resources permit. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is not the level of service that my department would like to provide. But I have had to take some difficult decisions following the outcome of June and October monitoring, and I simply cannot spend money that I do not have. I call Ian for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I um, do, in a sense, understand the, the Minister's difficulties that he has in, in respect of this, but the Minister will be aware that um, it is an emotional aspect that, that people, certainly the elderly and most vulnerable people within our society, do have in respect of um, street lighting, especially around their properties. Um, has the Minister given any consideration to looking at other aspects of his um, overall budget to try to see if um, he could certainly lessen the burden in respect of, of this work, and um, whilst I'm not necessarily saying cut other aspects, but you know, at least if it was more balanced, um, it certainly would be um, easier to deal with and more acceptable to, to communities. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question. And can I say that this has not been an easy decision for me, or, or, or uh, one uh, or a decision that has been lightly, uh, lightly taken? Uh, and indeed, we have forensically scrutinised all aspects of, their, of our budget this year. Uh, and unfortunately, such are the, uh, uh, such are the uh, impacts that uh, this was um, one of the realistic measures available to me in terms of external contractors. And it is, uh, and I draw the parallel uh, to, the, to the members' um, own uh, colleague uh, in, hell, in charge of health. Um, who, who uh, appears to have uh, cancelled uh, at this stage external works or uh, operations uh, and the like um, provided uh, by external curers and um, uh, companies uh, in respect of health operations. And so I think there are parallels there. Uh, these are not easy decisions, and we will continue to work through them uh, uh, as, as quickly and efficiently uh, as we possibly can. I call Alex Maskey. Uh, Cormac, uh, last can I, call, can I thank the Minister for his responses so far? And I do, uh, like the previous uh, member, do understand entirely the difficult decisions that have been made by the Minister. Could I ask the Minister uh, to what extent would public safety uh, determine the nature of the kind of lighting programme and, and, and where repairs might actually be carried out? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to, to the member uh, for at least having sympathy for me. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, we, we, uh, we uh, in relation to uh, obviously there are statutory duties uh, uh, involved here under Article 8 of the Roads Northern Ireland Order to maintain roads, uh, etc. Uh, a department has. Uh, received legal advice on this issue. Uh, we will continue to inspect roads and footways and street lighting columns 
um, and defects will be recorded as uh, normal. Um, it is clear that uh, defects may not be repaired as quickly as, uh, as normal and all, but, uh, and all repairs will be prioritised on the basis of, of safety. Uh, can I also say that my department will continue uh, to actively investigate and defend uh, public liability claims with every case turning on its own facts? Uh, ultimately, uh, it, it will be up to the courts to decide if the reduced standards comply with my department's statutory duty. I call Joe Byrne. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answers thus far. The Minister will be aware that there is some concern that sometimes DRD people take bulbs from lights that are working to areas where they are not working, and it is a case of almost Rob Peter to pay Paul. He will also be further aware that a parish priest in Drumquan, Father Mullen, was very concerned that six lights were out for over two weeks, and he felt that on their public security and public safety issues, they should have been repaired quicker. Can the member Thanks. come to okay. Grateful to the uh, member for his, uh, uh, um, his question. Uh, I, I'm, I have to say I'm not aware of DRD officials uh, swapping lights, uh, either working or, or not working, um, particularly outside places of worship. Um, <laughs> we're lighting, lighting my darkness, we beseech thee, I think would be a common enough prayer. Um, the, the, uh, but on a serious uh, basis, I think uh, the issue that he's referred to in, in respect of that church property, I think, has been resolved, and, and work, uh, maintenance work ha uh, has been done to, uh, to sort that situation out. Uh, if the member has specific um, uh, uh, issues or particular uh, cases that he wants to draw to my attention, I'll, I'll certainly investigate it. I call Alban McGuinness. Question number four, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, there are uh, currently proposals to dual two sections of the A6, these being Randallstown to uh, Castle Dawson and Londonderry to Dungiven. Funding has been provided to advance the A6 Randallstown to Castle Dawson dual carriageway project to a shovel-ready position in 2014-15, so it will be ready to commence construction at short notice should the necessary funding become uh, available. The A6 Londonderry to Dungiven dualing scheme which includes a bypass uh, at Dungiven, is well advanced in terms of development. It has been through public inquiry, and the inspector has produced a report containing a number of recommendations. These uh, included a request to consider an alternative route in the vicinity of Dungiven. This work is continuing, and when I'm satisfied, uh, all issues, a number of which are complex, uh, have been appropriately re uh, reviewed, I will issue a departmental statement. I call Alden McGuinness for supplementary. Uh, uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And uh, could I thank the Minister for his response, his detailed response? Uh, so there's some light at the end of the tunnel uh, in relation to the Dungiven uh, bypass. It has been delayed for many, many years, and I think people are uh, reaching the end of their. Uh, the patience which they've exercised in relation to that. Uh, would, would the minister give a guesstimate even in relation to the bypass? Uh, the member will understand I'm not a fan of guesstimates. Um, the, uh, but, but, I would, but I would say, <laughs> but I would say that, um, uh, that there is widespread political support, uh, I know, for the, for the Essex. Uh, and, uh, and obviously that, was, that is one reason that we have um, uh, 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 in part uh, allowed sections to be built to move forward as finance becomes available. Uh, and uh, we will look at that. Uh, of course, in the challenging financial times that we find ourselves, um, that's another reason why I'd be loath to, put, uh, to begin to put dates on it. Let me uh, assure the member, let me assure the House that uh, there is no reluctance on my behalf to carry forward this scheme at the earliest uh, available opportunity. I call Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask in relation to that, so whilst I accept the Minister's answer in relation to the A6, given there is particularly safety problems in relation to the money next section of that, and maybe money has not been available and we are not in an advanced stage, have you or your department any plans to do any other work in relation to that to cut down the number of accidents in that particular stretch of the road? Grateful to the, uh, to, to, to the member, uh, and of course, safety remains the, the priority for uh, the department in all uh, schemes um, as they are being uh, planned. 
but more importantly, uh, in all situations where um, they're not yet uh, in place, and uh, that remains of paramount uh, uh, um, interest and concern to us. Uh, we, 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 are, we have been looking uh, steadily at, uh, at the improvements to the A6 through this major scheme. Um, it, it can be separated to do sections, uh, and again, if, if money becomes available, we will certainly consider that in, uh, in a positive way. Uh, in the meantime, we continue to maintain the route to the best uh, of our ability. I call Danny Kinnan. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and may I follow that question? I'm sure the Minister is expecting it to show interest in Randall's time and Castle Dawson, but would he confirm the latest cost estimates um, of the scheme if it is delivered in phases? Well, the, the, uh, uh, what, we, what we plan to do, uh, the, the planning of the London Dairy to uh, on given dual carriageway um, uh, allows it uh, to be uh, constructed um, uh, in up to three parts. Um, the Dungiven Bypass itself, the Derry Crower Road to the Creebarkey Road, the Call Roundabout to Maydown Roundabout, and the Maydown Roundabout to Derry Creer Road. Um, the, uh, the A6 Randall Sound Castle Dawson will, will uh, cost, we estimate, somewhere between 120 and 140 for the 14, 140 million for the 14 kilometre dual carriageway and uh, the A6 London Dairy to Dungiven scheme cost estimates for the three sections, uh, Dungiven Bypass between 55 and 65, the Call Roundabout and Maydown between 45 and 50, and the 25 kilometre section between Maydown Roundabout and Derry Creer Road uh, between 290 and 305 million. Moving on, I call Declan McAleer. Uh, Cash River Quig, question five, Little Hall. Following on, Mr Deputy Speaker, from the successful legal challenge in 2013 to the A5 Western Transport Corridor, four draft uh, reports have been developed to assess impacts on the integrity of all potentially uh, affected European designated environmentally sensitive sites, nine in total, uh, in the vicinity of the A5 Western Transport Corridor scheme. A public consultation exercise on three of these reports uh, commenced on the 30th of April 2014 and concluded on the 13th of June 2014. The subject of the fourth report, the Tully Bog special, uh, special Area of Conservation, is impacted by air quality aspects and therefore required further updated traffic survey information before publication. The consultation period on this draft report commenced on the 15th of October 2014 and will conclude on the 28th of November 2014. It's important that my department doesn't in any way preempt the outcomes of this consultation exercise, hence the way forward with the scheme thereafter can only be determined following careful consideration of all of the responses received. If the findings without preempting any findings from the uh, consultation. Does the Minister believe that his department will be in position to issue the orders by the end of this year? Well, as I've indicated to the, uh, to the uh, member, um, obviously uh, it is important that, um, the, uh, uh, that we work through the processes involved. The next uh, st step in progressing the scheme. Uh, would be uh, the publication of the new environmental statement and the draft vesting order and the draft direction order for the scheme. Um, development uh, work uh, on these is now at an advanced uh, stage, but a firm date for publication cannot be given until after consideration of any submissions to the ongoing public consultation exercise and the impacts on the uh, Tullybog special area of conservation. Um, Publication of these documents uh, would be followed by a further consultation period, a minimum of six weeks, uh, when formal uh, representations and or objections to the scheme can be made. Uh, this uh, consultation is likely uh, to lead to the need for a public, uh, further public inquiry, but a decision on this can only be made after following careful consideration of the representations and level of objections raised uh, in response to the consultation exercise. If deemed necessary, a public inquiry is likely to be held later in 2015. And that concludes the period of listed questions, and we now move on to topical questions. And I call Trevor Lunn. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, the minister, like all ministers, 
constantly refers to the need to make savings within his budget. So can I ask him, does he have any plans to review the uh, free travel scheme for over 60-year-olds? Grateful to the member for his, uh, his question uh, uh, and uh, not going to ask him to declare any special interest uh, uh, in the scheme. Um, but let me say, I, I am a very firm supporter, uh, and indeed my party are very firm supporters of the concession refer scheme. I, I believe there are, it brings considerable benefits uh, to uh, the travelling public, uh, not least uh, people uh, who um, may be regarded as senior citizens. It gives them the opportunity to uh, um, enjoy uh, a day out in the company of friends and perhaps family, to go and visit family. Gives them the opportunity to uh, engage socially, and also, and importantly, to for, for our town centres and our cities, to actually shop uh, and spend money and help the local economies. So, I'm not uh, interested in uh, cutbacks to uh, the concessionary fare scheme, uh, and uh, and I have argued that consistently around the executive table. I believe the executive should fund it centrally. I believe uh, and hope very much that I have won that ar argument around the executive table. Uh, and as we go forward, uh, I, I want to see people benefit uh, from uh, the, uh, the concessionary fare scheme as it, pres uh, as it is presently constituted. I call Trevor Lund for supplementary. Yes, uh, thank you. The, the Minister has prompted me to declare an interest of a sort, although not in the particular age range that I'm going to refer to. Because uh, I understand that around 27% of all the journeys undertaken under the scheme are for people in the age range of 60 to 65, some of whom are probably still working. Um, so without, without advocating the termination of the scheme, is the Minister prepared to even consider a possible adjustment to the minimum age, perhaps up to 65, which I understand might save between 7 and 10 million pounds at the present time? Well, I'm grateful to the, to, to the member for his supplementary question. And, and, uh, I, I think there are anomalies. I can see that there are uh, uh, anomalies within, uh, uh, within, within the system, but I don't believe that it is worth um, uh, addressing them. I'm not sure uh, and will, will want to check uh, his assertion that uh, some of these savings could potentially amount to £7 million. Uh, uh, we look at that, but irrespective of that, I think uh, the, the opportunity that the concessionary fare scheme provides for people uh, to, to, to go out and socially engage and to spend money, even at weekends, uh, if, even for the few who perhaps um, use it uh, to travel to work, at least uh, at weekends they have other opportunities where they can benefit uh, local economies. Um, it strikes me as, as uh, very strange um, uh, electoral uh, uh, policy to be in favour of both of water charges and indeed cutting the concessionary fare schemes. I would be interested to read the Alliance uh, Manifesto when it is published. Moving on, I call David McNary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, regrettably, your department officials and TransLink executives has descended into a blame game over who was responsible for cocking up the costs of the rail track between Coleraine and Londonderry, escalating from £22 million to £40 million. Who is at fault, Minister, your department or TransLink? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his, uh, for his question. And, and we had the opportunity, and uh, he uh, will know and remember well the exchange that we uh, were able to uh, have through the uh, Regional Development Committee uh, on uh, last Wednesday. Um, I had set out uh, very clearly uh, my view, my displeasure at the failures um, involved in this project. Uh, he will also know that I have uh, uh, initiated a, a lesson learned um, exercise uh, within TransLink and indeed within my own department, and I expect those reports to be on my desk before the end of this year. I call David McNary for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'd remind the Minister, thank him for his answer, but I'd remind him that at the committee after he left, having heard from him and his officials, we then also heard from TransLink. That was why I asked the question. Um, could I ask him this? Has he any doubt that the cost of £40 million will be the all-in final cost of this project? And if not, and it spirals again, what percentage increase will he tolerate? Or will he hold to the 40 million as a fixed sum? And could he tell us just how he intends to get this 40 million? 
grateful to the member for his supplementary. Uh, I, uh, I can confirm that, that, that I believe the current estimate to be accurate, but in order to um, uh, give belt and braces to that, um, I, have, I, I will be insisting that we will test uh, the validity of that uh, projection uh, before we go out to uh, procurement and to award uh, the contract. But I, uh, I don't want to second guess that uh, uh, to, uh, at all. But I do believe that um, this is a project that uh, is very worthwhile. Um, it remains an executive priority. I think there has been huge success in terms of the rail travel. I outlined that earlier. Uh, and I do believe strongly that for reasons of uh, public transport and indeed for reasons of, of uh, the public good that we should continue to pursue with this project. Alistair MacDonald is not in his place. I call Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, the, the Minister will be aware that I have made representations about a proposed park and ride uh, scheme at Tam Moor outside of Dungan. I am wondering if the Minister can give me any update on progress with that scheme. Grateful to the member. Uh, all politics uh, is local, it was once famously said, and of course uh, it is very important. And park and ride generally, uh, I, I place great importance on, on uh, provision um, of park and ride facilities, not only at Tamna Moor but uh, all over Northern Ireland, and we're, we're, we're making progress in terms of that uh, and making it easier for people then to use public transport or uh, to share. Uh, transport uh, indeed with others. Um, can I tell the member that construction of the park and ride is expected uh, to be at Tamna Moor is expected to be complete in January 2015. It will provide 280 spaces. Um, the original uh, intention was to remove hard shoulders uh, to encourage better use of um, the new facility. I call Tom Elliott for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I thank the uh, the Minister for that. I'm just wondering, because there are so many vehicles being parked uh, just off the Stangmore roundabout between that and Bingannon Town, uh, are there any measures then to uh, ensure that they use actually the Tamna Moor park and ride? To the, to the member for his supplementary, um, he, he will uh, obviously know uh, because we've had representations from him, uh, from himself and his office. Uh, in relation to this, that the hard shoulders are used by a number of traders um, who have applied for and been given licences by Dungannon and South Tyrone uh, Borough Council. Uh, following representations from a number of sources, including uh, the Council and indeed uh, Mr Elliott, um, the, the hard shoulders will remain in place and traders will be able to continue to use their licences. And I call Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, um, given the debacle in terms of the Belfast to London Dairy Line, does he believe that his department is sufficiently engaged in terms of the project board and in terms of the project itself? Grateful to the member for his, uh, uh, his question. Uh, and again, we, we, we uh, spent much time uh, on, in, and in some detail look, exploring these issues at uh, the Regional Development Committee session last Wednesday. Uh, and, uh, and he also knows that uh, we, I have set in place the lessons learned, uh, um, um, and uh, those uh, will be undertaken by the Chief Executive of uh, TransLink, and will uh, also look at the performance not only of, of the uh, Executive uh, uh, of uh, TransLink, but also uh, the, the role of the Board and all issues, uh, and, and the issue. Uh, of my department and officials and um, how they performed uh, is also being scrutinised. Both reports I expect to have by the end uh, of this year. I call Trevor Clark for supplementary. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? Um, I'm sure but the Minister will be um, as surprised as we were after he left last week when TransLink came to the table to tell us that the observers were more than observers and had actually full access to the papers. So what assurance can the uh, can you Minister give us in this House that when your uh, departmental officials describe themselves as observers, and it turns out when TransLink come on board, they say they're not only observers, they have full access to papers and actually can speak during and are actually at the same table as the project board. What are you going to do in terms of the Minister with your officials? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary, and of course, uh, the, um, 
Committee of Regional Development, I understand, uh, are, are conducting uh, their own uh, review or inquiry uh, uh, into this issue. I, I haven't had an opportunity yet to study uh, the, uh, the terms of reference of that, uh, but I have no doubt that, uh, that the evidence that, that uh, he uh, and the committee uh, will produce will, um, will better inform uh, the, the, the whole situation. I, I, I should also say that the role of uh, the official um, at um, the relevant subcommittee of uh, the Translink Board reviewing these things is um, uh, simply um, to observe uh, it, 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 the, the project. All projects are carried forward by, uh, as he will know, by the executives of, of uh, Translink. Uh, but I will, of course, be interested in uh, any piece of work that the, that the committee wish to provide. I call Peter Weir. Mr. Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister, in light of the um, flooding problems that we had last week, whether there's any plans to revisit or indeed adjust in any way the policy on gully cleaning? Well, I'm grateful to the, to, uh, to the member for his, um, uh, his, his question. Um, he will uh, know that, of course, the uh, exceptional uh, rainfall that, that, that fell um, last, uh, uh, last week um, in areas of Northern Ireland uh, was um, uh, absolutely uh, astonishing in many ways. Uh, I want to sympathise uh, with all householders and businesses uh, who, and business owners who were affected by that, by, by the recent uh, flooding. To put it into some context, uh, I can tell the House that the average November rainfall is around three and a half inches. Uh, the total rainfall to date has been over five inches, um, and this is only, uh, you know, this is the 18th of the month, uh, or 140 per cent of the average uh, for the entire month. Of course, the, uh, the counties down in Armagh were the areas most badly hit, uh, and uh, areas such as Newry, Portadown, and Lurgan uh, were badly affected. So, in some parts uh, of South Down and South Armagh, in the three day period uh, from last Tuesday, up to four inches fell, more than the average for the entire month in just three days. And certainly, um, uh, can I say, my department has never stopped cleaning gullies. And let me uh, underscore that uh, continually. Yes, uh, we um, have had to restrict the work of external contractors, which um, accounts for about 25 per cent of the normal work. But in terms of the gullies, we continue to maintain them, particularly uh, in areas of known wet spots. I call Peter Weir. Minister, for his reply. Uh, Minister in light of the war of words that, that then ensued between your own department and the Department of Dard, who have responsibility for uh, river maintenance, where I think a lot of the problems arose. Uh, I wonder if you could outline what uh, steps that are being taken to ensure there's better cooperation between the two departments. Well, uh, I, can I thank the member for his, uh, for his uh, question, but uh, I, I very much regret um, uh, that I found it necessary to have to a, defend myself and the role of my department uh, in, 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 at a time when uh, the concentration would have been better uh, on, on uh, improving things for, for people who were uh, at the very sharp end uh, and uh, their, their homes and their businesses impacted by flooding. Uh, but I do say that in particular, um, uh, in terms of the Bridge Street Murray uh, situation, it was very clear that the reasons for that flood was um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the rivers, one of the local rivers, um, uh, burst its banks on at least two occasions, uh, and given the amount of the high volumes of rainfall that it, uh, that it had occurred uh, in, the, in the period running up to it, um, no system uh, could have uh, coped uh, with that. I refer the member to uh, and reminded uh, some ministerial colleagues that, uh, that uh, the outcome of the PEDU report following the June 2012 flooding uh, incident which recommended that um, one department and one single minister should take account and be responsible for um, uh, emergencies uh, of this nature. I support those recommendations. It is rather a pity that some of the people who were complaining most loudly uh, around the executive table have not supported those, but I look forward uh, to seeing uh, if there is a change uh, of attitude. 
And that is the end of questions to the Minister of Regional Development.